Hey y'all, hopefully me. And I'm not just gonna wind up talking to myself for an hour. Um, hopefully people show up because I feel kind of silly just talking to myself. Um, but forgive the typing because I am throwing out throwing out a tweet. Almost misspelled my own Twitch account. Hey, Sybil, how are you? Hi, who is in the chat? Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Name displayed is me. Tis me. I will change my channel badge for a moment just so y'all can see me. Hey, Nick, how are you? Um, so, it's a little weird because I'm staring at myself because I'm not playing a game yet. So how are you, Nick? Um, is there anything you want to know about TwitchCon or should I just start talking? Because I'm still kind of processing how I feel. Uh, and I, I'm happy to enable you. Um, sorry, I had to mess with the mic because every time I stream on PC, y'all are like, I can't hear you. Um, so, do you all, for the folks that are watching, maybe not chatting, do you have questions um, about TwitchCon overall? Or do you want me to just kind of talk about it? Because we are going to go more in-depth on uh, Spawn on Me this week. Since I was there and, you know, repping for the crew with, with my badge. So, if there are questions, I can take those. Um, whew. So, I have not yet watched the VOD for the Being Political panel. I don't know that I want to watch the vid for the panel. Hey, Frixia, welcome. How are you? Um, okay, so I got there Thursday. And it wasn't bad getting the badge. There was a little bit of confusion because since I was the only person from Spawn on Me attending, we tried to change my badge to the Spawn on Me, thus having a partner badge. Um, hey, Apu, thanks for that host. Um... And, you know, that was a little bit of a, of a confusion. Um, thanks for the auto host, Femme Freak. Femme Frequency. Um, because on paper, it said that my, that the um, channel I was affiliated with was Spawn on Me, but it still said an affiliate badge. So there's a little bit of that. Finally got my badge, but it was too late to get any benefits of having a partner badge. Um, you know, I didn't have any info on the partner party. My contact on the partner team was like, it's it's full. You really needed to have RSVP ahead of time. So that didn't do me a lot of good to, to have the partner badge in that sense. Uh, thank you for the auto host gamer tag radio. I appreciate you having me on the auto host. Um, so that was okay. Hey, Chris. It was nice seeing you at... TwitchCon. Chris is lovely and mods for uh, 8 bit Dylan. And are your, I don't know your pronouns. Um, I don't want to assume. Um, so, you know, I did that, couldn't find anything, wound up out to dinner with a huge group of people um, Andrea, Rabicoon, and a bunch of folks that Rabicoon knows, um, which was fine. I was just, I was tired because I was up early, 
you know, Chicago time and it felt like, um, it just felt like a long ass day. I had extraordinarily good travel like getting there though. No, no one checked my bag. I got, got on early, got a good seat, didn't wind up talking to anyone, even the middle seat was empty. Um, there were a lot of people going to TwitchCon on my flight, but we weren't doing the chatty thing. Other than someone who asked me when I was wearing my hoodie, my hat, and carrying my bag, are you going to TwitchCon? And I was like, I don't know, maybe I just like Twitch, I don't know. Um, and so that was okay, but then Friday comes, and I had a meeting with uh, the person who does charity, one of the people who does charity, at Twitch. I don't know if Ali is the only person, um, but she and I had a meeting and after finally like getting there and getting sat down, we missed the beginning of the keynote. I wasn't concerned because um, it's TwitchCon. Everything is streamed and there's a VOD later. So get there and there are massive lines. Now this is like 20 minutes into when the keynote was supposed to have started. Um, and couldn't really figure out a good way in. Like lines were snaking back almost to the street. Um, went down to where I picked up the badge because there was another entrance and the line there was just as bad because they, there was high security. Th I don't think anyone knew at a time that there'd be bag checks, there'd be all the security, like, you know, going in and out. There was no partner entrance that anyone knew of. There was no staff entrance. The only people really getting kind of leeway were exhibitors. Okay, you're an affiliate, but I meant more like he, they, she pronouns, not, um, not your status as a Twitch streamer. Um, thank you for the host, Pretty Pretty Pixel. Um... And it was just kind of a clusterfuck to get in. So finally got in and I was only stressing because I need verse games was in the Twitch Unity booth and that's a whole other clusterfuck that I'll get into in a minute. Uh, but I didn't even know where it was. It wasn't on the map. It wasn't in the app. It wasn't anywhere. And um, there wasn't even speaker badges. It was like either partner, affiliate, or attendee. And it was just, it was just kind of like, Okay, so we have speaker badges, but this does us no good. Well, we, we're speakers, but this does us no good because security was pretty much like, sorry, sucks to be you if you try to come in. And there are people that probably were late to their panels. Or it's like, if you once you got in, if you didn't want to go through that hassle again, you basically were stuck in the convention center. Um, so I finally got in, Andrea came and got me and had an uh, exhibitor badge for the Twitch Unity booth, thankfully, because they were not letting people in to even say, hey, I'm at a booth, someone has my badge, they didn't care. Um, and so that was, that was a little while because the Twitch Unity booth was way in the back, like way the fuck in the back. Um, it was very small, according to uh, folks that were there last year, it was like eight, like four five tables on one side, some round standing tables. And it was a lot of groups to be in that space. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of folks that, you know, didn't know we were there. If not for any key kind of boosting and telling people about it all over the weekend and their Twitch Unity, their Twitch Unity, um, you know, hashtag and stuff like that it would not have worked out as well. Because it made me wonder about, it made me wonder about, you know, how it was gonna work. Would people even come by the booth? Would they know the booth was there? Because um, any key did have a presence the whole weekend. You know, they were pretty straightforward. There was the guilds for Twitch and it was the LGBT guild and the black guild that were sharing their desk. And, um, and then so ourselves, Deaf Gamers, um, ferociously Steph came by and had some time. But it was like these weird odd chunks of time where it was like two hours or three hours over the three days. And it just didn't seem like, if people found us, they found it by, well, it seemed like they found us by accident. Um, 
uh, there were some misconnections because, of course, you know, if I had a meeting or the one day I was on a panel, somebody came by to look for me. Um, it just didn't seem like it was much attention given to the Twitch Unity area that it could have been. Um, except for, I think it was Inclusivity City that was done last year. And that was done a lot better from what I heard that it was, um, that it was everyone had their own booth, everyone had their own you know, section. And it wasn't a, oh, you've got two hours today, you've got three hours tomorrow. So hopefully that improves for next year, wherever TwitchCon winds up going. Because um, there are some people who, um, there are some people who, I guess, replied to that survey they put out about wanting, um, wanting it to be either East Coast or Chicago. Hey, Andrea. Yeah, since you're in the chat, can you talk a bit about Inclusivity City? Um, Simply Andrea is in the chat. She's amazing. I love her dearly. Um, she was there last year. She was. You went all three years so far, correct? And I know there's a delay because I'm talking and chat. Um, so that just, it didn't seem to net a lot of response. We didn't get a lot of interaction. I did get a chance to talk to Brian from It Gets Better, but we had connected prior to the convention. And um, it was... It was good, but it really, again, happened by accident. And I just feel like if that's all the space in, or in the Twitch Unity area was going to get, it could have had a more prominent space. I mean, something people would have to pass to get to other areas. Um, a lot of the traffic came from people looking for, I think, the partner meet and greets. Because um, I just really feel like a lot of people found it by accident. And, you know, not having good reception really did not help. So us to like tweet out or something and say, hey, come by the booth. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, you know, people that were there as guests didn't really have special guests. Privileges, I don't even know how you got a special guest pass or VIP badge. Um, staff just had staff badges. There was one specific staff entrance to like kind of their their bunker area. Um, and if you were with a staff member, you still couldn't get around because uh, Ruth, hey Mia, how are you? Um, you know, it, it just felt like it wasn't, a lot of things were not executed well. Like even, putting down our schedule to be in, in the inclusivity area um, wasn't decided to like maybe three or four days before the event. Um, I did not see a tweet about from the main Twitch account. I didn't see a tweet about from the Twitch con account. If I'm wrong, someone please tell me. Um, but it just seemed very, very poorly handled and scheduled. No, there was Wi-Fi in the Twitch Unity section but it was just for the folks there hey danicus um you know it wasn't the end of the world but you know for me and and I, i've been thinking about this since yesterday and the whole weekend maybe i am not the target demographic for twitchcon in terms of just going as an attendee um but you know if i'm going to spend the money or the organization's money to go and to represent for i need diverse games or anyone else, or even spawn on me, because, you know, I had a spawn on me partner badge. Where is it, where is the return on the investment? Which sounds very mercenary, it's very capitalist, but it is what it is. Um, you know, for me to justify spending those funds, especially as we are a nonprofit, or even my own money, or if I take donations or do a fundraiser, where's the benefit in us going? Um, so, you know, that part of it was not, was not a highlight. Um, and this is going to sound cynical as fuck because, you know, I, I am pursuing partnership, but from a business aspect, not for, not for, um, not for the reasons a lot of people want partnership. For me, it is a value added thing is a commodity for me to be able to say at some point, hopefully that, 
you know, I, I'm a Twitch partner would be, this is something where I can go to then a game developer. I can say something or I can go, hey, I've got this capital because I've got this tick mark from Twitch. Not because I want to make streaming my career. Because realistically, and I, I, I know a few people who stream are in the chat. Um, and I'm not sure who all is watching. But realistically, to stream and make a living off of it. Where I live in the U.S., I would need anywhere from a 1000 to about 1,500 subscribers at the 499 or or Twitch Prime level because that pays out to 50, because Twitch gets half. So I would need a thousand subs. Twitch takes their half immediately. That leaves 2,500 dollars a month, or however often uh, partners get paid. Before I've got to consider taxes. Before I consider health insurance and other living expenses beside just rent and utilities. Uh, streaming is not a cheap thing to do. You have to consider, you know, you have to keep up on equipment. If you stream from PC, you have to, you have to keep up with video cards. Uh, you have to keep up with technology. <laughs> exactly. Oh, thank you so much, my v Mia V. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate the sub. Can I get some love in the chat for Mia V? Because that was really sweet. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't look enthusiastic. I'm just really fucking tired. Um, it My flight was delayed coming home. I didn't get home till midnight. Um, it could be Mia when you... Mia or Maya. Um, you don't... Twitch Prime subs do not automatically renew for the streamer. Right. You know, I've got a pet. I've got it. Luckily, I don't have really transit costs because I, uh, okay, me, yeah, got it, um, because I work at home, but any kind of costs come from me going to conventions, um, things like that, so realistically, I would need a thousand to fifteen hundred subs, I don't think I know any streamer that I follow or that I know of that has that kind of sub count and can actually make a living off streaming, um, so, you know, I feel in a lot of ways, some people that were going to TwitchCon were going because they wanted to meet their favorite streamers, which is cool. They want to see their buddies that stream with them. Um, and that's cool. That's, that's great. That's cool for you. Um, but for me, uh, uh, going to a convention is work. Um, so again, I'm, I'm rethinking if I am the audience for something like TwitchCon. I know for PAX, like PAX is, there's stuff I can do at PAX even if I'm not, you know, the prime audience. There are panels I'm going to enjoy, there, there are people I can see, it's usually in a city where I can go find something to do if I don't have something going on at the convention, or I know people there that I can see. So it's not, it's not, you know, a thing where I don't know anyone at Long Beach. Uh, there's nowhere I could really go because I didn't have a car. Um, and trying to get a lift during the convention was like life cost an arm and a leg. Um, yeah, Malfun. I like some of the streamers I know and I follow. You know, two fifty is usually a streaming goal, and you know, and that's still a lot. And they they go up and down. Um, but one thing they did they did announce at TwitchCon was gifting subscriptions, but also rating rating at the touch of a button. I guess. I'm not sure how that works, but it was something they announced. Um, but, you know, that said, um, the other couple things I want to talk about before we, we get into games in a bit is the panels. Um, a lot of the panels seem to be raiding. R-A-I-D-I-N-G. I hope to God, they'd never put a rating system in for streamers. Because you know what kind of drama that would cause? Um, um, I mean, people already do that unofficially, I'm sure. Um, but it was like one button rating and then gifting subscriptions. Um, but the panels, a lot of it seemed to be dupl 
duplicative. Um, and, you know, even though I know people on a lot of the panels, like the gayest panel at TwitchCon, was very white. And no one there identified as bisexual or, or pan or anything else. And I don't know, it was just a lot of, you know, high, higher streamers. I think everyone on the panel was partnered. So it, it would be great to see people who are not partners. It would have been good to have more diversity on that panel. And also, and both, both ethnically and, you know, of orientation. You know, and I know Adam. I know he's a good guy, but hey, everyone, not everyone can be great all the time. Um, so, you know, that was good. I went to a couple other panels and it just seemed like people, like people in the audience either wanted to, wanted to have their moment in the sun. And, and granted, I know I moderate in a very specific way. I moderate very hard because um, I get very tired of going to panels where people want to tell their life story and have comments instead of questions or give a long convoluted back story to why it is they're asking what they're asking. Frankly, I don't care. I will never give a fuck about it. Um, and there were just questions where it's just like, what are you actually asking? Or you wonder if the person actually listened to anything said in the panel? Oh, well, thanks for the host, Cargums. I hope you are well. Um, it just seems like... Um, a ten what do you mean, malfunct? Um... I'm, I'm just waiting to see what Malfunk says to, to my question. Um, um, but, you know, the panel that I did. Let, let's just talk about the panel that I did. And, and Andrea, if you're here, I want to talk about the, the Afterthought panel because, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go because the meeting we were at uh, overlapped that panel a bit. And as we know, trying to get back into the con was, was a clusterfuck about any time of day. Yeah, but you know, not not everyone w wants attention. Like I do not stream because I want attention. I'm I'm very shy and awkward, and a lot of times I don't have my cam on because of that. Um, but hey, it's an IRL stream. You kind of need to see me because that would be weird if I didn't do IRL and actually you could see me. Um, I think there's a a wanting. I mean, because a lot of people get, I don't know why people get into streaming. I think that would be a good survey, is what made you start streaming. Hey, Jay, how are you? Not much. Uh, doing a bit of IRL, doing a recap. Um, Jay Dorrance is awesome. And uh, streams as well. You should give him a, a follow. Um, true, that's very true, Nick. Um, but like the panel I was on. You know, I knew it was going to be fraught because politics. And, you know, I was already feeling about the panel for other reasons. And it was hard enough to kind of make sure we kept on target, kept on focus. And then when we got to questions, not a lot of people stood up, which surprised me because I figured for politics and a chance to have that moment, people would be jumping out of their chairs to have their their question and moment in the sun. And I was just like, uh, okay. So we have four people asking questions. The first question was irrelevant as fuck. Um, well, it was, it was, um, they want to talk about Twitch Unity Day because we did bring it up because Twitch Unity Day was politicized by other people, not necessarily politicized by Twitch in just having it. Um, I think it's safe to say a lot of people agree that, um, agree that it was poorly executed. It was not well planned. There was not enough time given, but that wasn't the be all end all of the panel. And the question asked was specifically about the handling of Twitch Unity Day. Um, 
That's that's very true, Jay. Um, I will I will get to that in a second. Um, but you know, for those of you that watched and and stayed watching, or either on my channel, on Adam's channel, I think everyone kind of hosted on their own channels. Um, you know, the the person who want to have what about my free speech? I'm conservative. Um, and it's like, dude, you can say what the fuck you want to say. No one's stopping you from speaking on panels, on your, or not on panels, but on your channel. But that was a really shitty thing to basically try to corner a Twitch staff member who's not on moderation, who's not part of the admin team, and get them to basically give you the okay to be a racist asshole. That's what they wanted. And it's just like, dude, okay, you're conservative. Don't, don't do this, my free speech. I can't say anything I want to say. Um, hey, Chilians, how are you? No worries. Welcome. Good luck at the doctor. Um, I hate doctor's appointments, so good luck. Um, I'm just like, dude, no, no one is going to stop you, um, from, from speaking up. So that, that come, it annoyed me. I know I made the face. Apparently, I had the side and all size that everyone heard. Um, because Sock Monkey sent me a tweet and was like, um, the look on your face and that what white nonsense is that face. I was like, well, can't help it because people, um, but they basically, they wanted a guarantee that that was the word that they used. A guarantee that they could basically say what the fuck they want to say without penalty and, and all Brian could say was as long as you don't violate the TOS because as a Twitch employee what the fuck else could he have said on that panel especially with second in command of the admin team sitting in the audience I wish I could have pointed out Greg and be like hey go talk to that guy and I'm sure he'll have an answer for you but I wouldn't do that to Greg um I, I can't control my facial expressions, y'all. Um, it is what it is. But it was just a shitty... It was a shitty thing to do to a staff member that was on a panel. And I know it was already stressed out because sta Twitch staff was the... Were the staff at the convention. The people wearing staff members were not like volunteers. They weren't people that Twitch employed just for the convention. Those were people who work at, at Twitch every day. Um... So there's that too, is that you've got people thrown out of their element, like friend in data science is working the merch booth. <laughs> um, it was, it was appropriate. It was appropriate, but I did not realize it was so audible. Like I tried, I tried very hard not to be an asshole, but I fail. Well, not an asshole. Um, I tried to, um, I tried to... Fuck it. I didn't even try. I'm not even gonna tell that lie. Um, but I want to talk. I want to address what Jay said in the chat, and then um, Andrea. I want to talk about the. I want you to talk about the panel because I could not make it. But we we've seen what has happened because of uh, the afterthought panel, which specifically was about Twitch Unity. Um, so Jay said in the chat to add to the point. I think a lot of people want to speak in support from their experience, but they're intimidated by their experience being invalidated. Based on how they're perceived, ergo, they brained up as a way to support the best way they know how. Um, that's true. I mean, I, I always come back to the geekological fallacy. Um, is that we're geeks. We all like our thing in common is Twitch. Either we broadcast, we mod, we watch all the above. None of the above. Maybe we just are fans of streamers. Um, but it's like, I'm, I need to find a way to connect to you to bring this up and to try to validate make validate what you just said so you, that you know I heard you but also I need to give context for what I'm about to say so that you can hear me which you know in a podcast situation in a chat situation face to face over coffee fine limited time for Q&A a panel I do not give nary a fuck about that um I'm I'm not there for that. I'm not. 
I'm not down for someone who needs to tell their life story, which sounds terrible. It sounds fucking terrible. Um, but I don't care. And honestly, the audience probably will not care because we need you to ask your question and then we can move on. Hey, Kalita. Um, and then British said something. Did it scroll by already? Sorry. You said something about vid VidCon. I know fuck all about VidCon. Um, I've never been to VidCon. I have zero interest in VidCon. Um, I'm not sure what happened with diversity panels there. Um, right, Malfunct? When I've been in, in the audience, I'm kind of like, I don't care. Where's your question? So whenever I have a chance to have the podium, um, I'm like, don't don't tell a story. I don't need context. You can tell me a comment outside. I don't give a fuck right now. Um, which I know sounds harsh, but I've been in too many panels where Q&A time has been wasted by people that, that want to have like their, their, their life story and their validation moment, which is I can validate you by answering your question. I don't need to validate you by hearing a five minute backdrop to a 30 second question. Because most panels... You only ever have an hour. You may get an hour and a half if a con is very generous. Um, and that was just, that was just fucked up. And that last question we got where the person was trying to ask about emotes, I still don't know what the fuck they actually were trying to ask. Um, like, I'm literally confused. Um, I'm literally confused about what the fuck they were trying to ask. Um, one second. Because dudes start asking about, like, um... He started, he like, he literally could not remember the word for emotes. And it was just like, but it's still, I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. Um, I think he was trying to get a, I think he was trying to ask about using emotes for hate speech, which still wasn't the point of the panel. It was not the moderation panel, which I went to and was very good. I'm going to do a write-up about it. Um... Hey Ruth, how are you? I'm uh I'm I'm talking about the Twitch cons. Um shout out to Ruth who who uh suffered through merch booth duty, who's amazing. Um and is the reason I got a chance to go out to the Twitch office and give a talk. So um yay, sick day. Amazing. Um, so I was, I was talking about the being being political panel, which you were at. Because um, I am still unsure what the fuck that last person was trying to ask. Like, are you trying to ask the ways that people use emotes to be political and harass folks? Are you... Like, where, where was the question? And luckily I could cut him off because we were out of time. But it was just like... We, we, we all kind of wonder, like, was that dude okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that dude that was wondering about emotes. I'm kind of like, what? Like, he literally couldn't remember the word for emote. That That's legit, Ruth. I, I am sure he was. High and or otherwise impaired. Because um, I was just like, where where is this going? Where... Um, but I'm glad we had the panel, um, you know, I'm also, I'm, you know, I was not originally supposed to moderate the panel and, and this little bit of, um, oh, that, that would make sense if you'd actually got that question out. Um, if you'd actually asked that question, we could have fucking answered him or at least answered him in the hallway, but I think he was wasted. Um, I'm glad we got, I'm glad the panel happened. I'm glad that um, 
we got a chance to have the conversation because a lot of people usually avoid politics. They avoid it like the plague. They don't want to talk about politics. They don't ever want it in their chat. And like I said in the beginning of the chat or at the beginning of the panel, um, those people are usually folks with zero consequence and nothing to lose when it comes to talking about politics. Um, and then some people, you know, depending on where they're at in their Twitch career, if they're well-known, if they're partnered, if they're affiliated, they're worried there's a monetary issue involved. Um, Sham! Thank you for the sub! Give some love to Sham and Om. Give some love. Thank you, Sham. Let's give, let's give some love to Sham and Om. He is awesome. He is a uh, Final Fantasy-focused streamer and um he was great and very supportive and and a delight to be around um and sham is gonna actually be doing some content for us um over on the i need diverse games channel <laughs> work off that lanyard oh my god that lanyard was not that expensive how are you sham oh my god where's the twitch purple heart i didn't know that was an emote oh bleed purple okay i should use that more often Hey, Kalita. You're out here being all quiet. I forgot I had, like, I turned on Ankhbot. I was like, what's that noise? Um, so, yeah. So, politics panel was good. I, I had not originally been the moderator of that panel. That was a thing. Um, IG. Oh, Instagram. I was like, IG. Um, but I, I would like more panels like that. I would like more panels where we get more in depth and we talk about serious issues, you know, not super deep, heavy issues, but I think things like mental health and taking care of yourself as a streamer, realizing it's fine to take a day off. Cause one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people grind and hustle and grind and hustle. And you know, if they get partnered or even if they get affiliate, they work themselves to a point where they're just like, holy fuck, if I take a day off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose money, I'll lose subs, I'll lose followers. Um, stream will be here. It does, and there was one about mental health and tabletop. I don't know, I don't remember if there was one specifically about streaming and taking care of yourself. I know there was a lot of the business of streaming. Um, so Ruth, maybe we can talk about that next year. Um, assuming that I actually want to come back to TwitchCon. Um, cause that's the thing I'll talk about to you, unless Andrea, you want to talk about your panel, the afterthought panel and your mods, you can do links. Um, um, it gets better was not the panel I thought it would be. Um, it was very much about it gets better and you know, the important, it was more about the importance of being safe and comfortable as a queer person on the platform. Um, to me, and, you know, they, they ended the panel with, um, you know, debuting their new video, which was very, very white and not a lot of rep for me. The only people of color I saw was when they did the translation of It Gets Better. Um, unless people were white passing in that video... Yeah, because on the brown face I saw, we're translating it gets better into other languages. So I have feedback for them. Um, I want to do one about mental health and streaming and taking care of yourself. And especially when people are on the road or aspiring to be partner, because that's where I see a lot of burnout. Or once they get partner, they go even harder because they're so afraid of losing that momentum. Which is frightening, because... At the end of the day, nothing is worth your health. Nothing is worth the grind that you are going through to to get or stay partnered. I mean, because let's be real, there are people you've seen do really terrible shit, such as the way they acted in the chat for the Afterthought panel. Um, so Ruth, if that's a chance for me to come back out and talk at Twitch, we should do a panel. Um, and actually, you should follow Coco the Louder. She has a PhD in psychology. Um, 
because that's what she talks about. Her streams are about that. So you should follow her. Um, but she would be a good person to bring out and talk about that stuff. Well, Coco does have a degree. She is local to me. She got partnered um, as a belly dance streamer. And unfortunately, life and health has happened. Thank you for the host, Gaming Witch. Welcome. Um, so she does have a doctorate in it. And her husband also, um, he doesn't stream. He's just, um, he monitors her stream. They both um, have backgrounds in psychology. And actually, um, Deb Budding, who is in LA, is a neuropsychologist. Mm, well, I would have taken, a, I would have gotten involved. Um, but we know why that wouldn't have worked out. Um, so. But yeah, um, look up. Oh God, what is Deb's Twitter? Nebula63 is her Twitter, Ruth. Twitter, and she's got a Twitch account, but she doesn't stream. Um, because I missed it, but actually, let me find the link to the to the panel, because that would have been useful. Here it is. Well, there was also the issue of how hard it was to get into the convention center. Yeah, and Coco the Lauder, she's Coco the Lauder on Twitter and Twitch. Um, so go give her a holler. Um, but she has a degree and she'd be great to bring to the office. Um, and just talk to you in general. Um, Alexandra Live dropped out of her program, but she is a data person. Sorry, I'm 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 having a snack of Haribo cherries. Um, all right, bye, Chris. Have a good day. Thanks for coming by, and thanks for saying hi at, at TwitchCon. It was nice to finally meet you. Um. Andrea, should I spill the tea or, or be nice? I mean, you're always nicer than I am, but I'm not nice. Um, there's a reason I couldn't bet on that panel to, with with a particular person who was on it. Um, so I think a follow up inclusivity panel would be good and make it people who are most affected by the lack of inclusivity and diversity on Twitch. Actually, I would love to get a Twitch staff member on that because I think it well, it's tricky because having a Twitch staff member means people are going to want answers that more than likely that person can't give, especially if they get put on the spot and ask things that they really can't answer either due to internal policy, stuff that is not public knowledge yet, or NDAs or what have you. Um, but I have ideas for panels and honestly for me to go back, I would have to be A, on panels and B, hopefully get some kind of assistance because, you know, if it continues to be a West Coast event, it ain't cheap. It's not cheap for four days or five days for me to go out to the West Coast. Um, all right, the, the VOD will be here, Mia. The VOD will be here. I'm going to talk a bit more and then I'm going to switch over to a game. I may even stop the stream and then so I can archive this one just as IRL and then restart it for a game. Or I may just do a, a highlight. Because I actually bothered to read my affiliate agreement and I have to remember that I can't upload it for 24 hours anyway. Because, hey, exclusivity. It helps when you read those agreements you sign as an affiliate, by the way. Um, so, um, what else? 
I mean, you know, for people that are Midwest or East Coast, you have to fly out the day before. You're stuck till the day after, unless you're willing to get home really, really late at night. Dre is tweeting away and I can't keep up. Um... But, as for the inclusivity panel and the afterthought panel, you know, they're... The issue with... What I found the issue with inclusivity is, and, and Ruth knows this, we've talked extensively about it, and I have, and I've come out to the office and spoken about it. Um, that's the description for the afterthought panel. God, they... That just seems so weird to, to put staff on stuff like merch. Because that's not what you do. Um... Um, so the, the inclusivity thing is that, you know, I brought this up when I was there and, and I talk about it when I get the chance is when we see people on the front page, it's usually the same scruffy white dudes or the same blonde bro dude looking people that aren't, aren't me or Andrea or, or Shamanam or other people that are not white. Um, or it's people that are always playing the same AAA game. And, you know, Bunmira, who's been streaming over on the I Need Diverse Games channel for us, you know, she got on front page, which is awesome. I'm glad she did. Um, um, but how often does that happen? I know UGR has been front page for a while. Sorry, I just got pinged. Hang on one second. I just got pinged by GameRex, which is actually next weekend. Who knew? Um, um, sorry. GameRex is next week. Guess who's not ready for GameRex? Guess who's not ready? Because it's weird. I'm staff for GameRex, but I'm also boss of honor for GameRex. It's very weird. Um, but we're still putting the schedule together. So I'm putting the schedule together, but I'm speaking and I'm a guest. It's weird. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, Sham, but I did uh, talk to um, Gary, who is uh, with the Black Guild. And, well, Bud Mara's not partnered. I'm not sure how she got front page. As far as I know, she is not partnered. Um, I mean, I still don't know how my talk got front page, to be honest. And this person get a block. Sorry. Because I keep getting tagged in tweets, I keep getting little blinky things. I haven't... Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that makes sense, but, like, we, we didn't know that it was going to be front page. Which I'm kind of glad I didn't know at the time. Uh, because I would have been really, really nervous. Um, because, surprise, your friend is a nervous presenter. Um, <laughs> uh, plug in your phone, Sham. Uh, or you mean like now or when you were at TwitchCon? 
Um, you know, inclusivity, there, there's a lot can, that can be done. I know Anna Prosser is doing a lot. Britt is doing a lot on the LGBT side, and Gary's doing stuff for the Black Guild. Um, damn, Sham. Um, um, you know, people... It, the hard part is, is that some people basically want to go, lull, it's Twitch. It's the internet. You gotta have a, a thick skin. No. I should not have to... I shouldn't have to have block bots. I shouldn't have to have a bunch of mods. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have to run bots to catch certain words and catchphrases because people think it's funny to you to throw out nigger or, you know, any other slur or call people fags or whatever. And yes, I know I said the words. It's... Um, but this is what happens. Either people get real inventive and find ways around, around saying it in chat or, you know, like what happened to Sham. Someone kept throwing out in Discord, so it would go out on the stream, saying the N-word on repeat, and that was funny to them. Because um, who was it? Base Cornbread was talking about someone, like all the races he gets, you know, he's got partnered. It hasn't gotten any better since he's got partnered. Um, you know, and then you got to, there, there's the thing with partnership too, is that there's a mystique about partnership. There is... There are some people who get very, what's a good word? I, I feel like there are some people like that is their be all end all goal. And when they don't get it or it takes a long time longer than they think it should, they get real bitter about partnership and who is a partner. Um, Cause the people we know um, in the chat that are not partnered, I know you all kick ass. I know that you're working hard. So I know that one day it'll happen because you're working toward it and you have good positive communities um but the people i see that get real salty about partnership the people that get real salty about oh well, why is so-and-so partner blah 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 it's like yeah mana uh that happens but it's instead of being happy for the person who has made that jump there are a lot of people who will be just bitter and salty and go, why wasn't that me? Instead of looking back on their own behaviors and looking back on their own um, stream or what it is that they may or may not be doing that could push them over the edge to partner. And, you know, and partnership, again, to me, it, it's a tool. It is a value-added thing. It is something that I can then go to a game company and go, hey... I will have more visibility to show this or more whatever, more capital, as much as I hate the fucking word. Um, it is, it's a value added thing, like the, like a blue check on twi Twitter, um, which can't get that either. So, um, um, it is, Ruth, but I don't think a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people think of it that way. They, um, they think of it as, um, they think of it as a goal. They think of it as, I'm on Twitch, this is what I should have. Versus, I'm going to bust my ass, I'm going to stream every day, three times a week, four times a week, and do good content, be a good citizen of Twitch, and apply and build my network, because, I don't know, that that's why I feel some folks go about partnership, and then they, they get angry. Um... I'm sorry. I Game Rack stuff keeps popping up in another tab and I can't kind of ignore it. Um, so sorry about the random tip taps. Um, well, and that's the thing though. It, it can make a lot of people feel second class even with the affiliate because there's still a big gap between affiliate and partner. 
Oh, that's true, Sham. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of partners I feel could use that to their advantage. They could use it as a tool for good. Um, but that's me. You know, I know not everyone else thinks that way. Not everyone else um, does. I don't know. I mean, I I know a lot of partner streamers, and for the most part. Um, they, they seem to do, do well, but maybe I'm just following the right kind of partner streamer. Um, I, I do find a lot of people that use that status for, for the greater good, but I know there's a lot of people who don't, that they've been partnered, or they get partnered and they change. We've all seen it. We've all seen people who get that purple tick, now that it's a purple tick, and they act, they just wild the fuck out. Because now they've made it. Now they're a partner. And, you know, to, to bring them back to TwitchCon, the whole partner thing, like the jersey, the lounge, the VIP entry into the boat party, which turned out to be a clusterfuck of lines, of a two-hour long line, and more. Um, the, the special event on Thursday, these are all perks that 1-2% to 2 of the overall Twitch population is eligible for, and that's assuming you can make it to TwitchCon. Being a partner doesn't mean that you can go do all this stuff, but, you know, like, if you go to PAX, then, um, there's a partner pavilion or partner lounge for you at PAX. So there's still this, this elevated status, but there's not anything like that for affiliates. Affiliates got a patch, which I need to, I should have tried to get my patch anyway, because I, I do like patches. Um, hey, Socks, how are you? You're one of my favorite people. Welcome. I'm, uh, I'm talking about TwitchCon and partnership and stuff. Um, yay. Um, I lost my thought. Sorry. Socks is awesome. Socks sent me really good whiskey. That That is amazing. Um, so, partnership. Back to that. So, you know, there were all these perks of partnership at, at TwitchCon. And there are perks of partnership where Twitch has a presence. Not sure what will happen at PAX Unplugged, because I don't know how big the tabletop market is on Twitch. Um, you know, I watch people who play. I watch I watch Matt Perot. I watch Adam. I watch a little bit of the d and I watch some other stuff. And I... Um, but tabletop is not, not that big of a share where I don't know if there'd be a Twitch presence at, at, um, at PAX Unplugged. But it's this kind of golden ticket that so many people aspire to, but I don't think that they do anything with it. Oh, that's stupid. Ruth, your, your staff. Um, so, I don't know. I just feel like it. if it was treated as more of a value-added tool and there were more social, socially significant, socially... <sighs> I don't because I don't want to say social justice because not everyone's social justicey, but some kind of you must do a social good with the status that we have that that you have earned. Oh, the whiskey that Sox sent me is a Kentucky exclusive. Um. So you know these these are things I think about when it comes to partner status. Not everyone does. Um. Well, it's it's for partners, not for staff. There's a whole, I'm sure there's a separate staff area, or green room or something. Usually, when you're working in booth, there's an area to kind of hide out in. Um, so it, it's it's interesting, but it's also frustrating because I feel like there should be some imperative to do good with this status once you apply and it is granted because. You're, you're trying, um, you know, you've worked at it and, and we know that there are some people 
Yes, public responsibility. Thank you. That is that is the right kind of phrase I was looking for. Um, because I'm going to go back to the afterthought panel. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's all good, Ruth. Um, is that that person that was being an asshole is a partner streamer with a huge audience of 50,000 followers. And, you know, Andrea popped in the chat after they kept talking about this basically mocking the fact that there was an inclusivity panel. When go to the front page, it's probably the same scruffy bearded white dude that's being featured. Or, you know, look at who were the featured streamer, featured partners um, for TwitchCon. Not a lot of people of color, not a lot of women that weren't these stereotypical, you know, thin blonde redhead or bright color hair chick with a lot of tattoos and a certain size. You're never going to see someone like me a feature streaming, a feature streamer. You know, there were no affiliates who were featured. Hey, Dufay, how are you? Welcome. Um, you know, un unpartnered streamers, even affiliates, make up the bulk of the people earning money for Twitch. You know, and, and I've said this before, it is not a secret. I feel like the affiliate regulation, affiliate requirements were way too low. They were not, um, they, there was no happy medium between these requirements to be a partner and these requirements to be an affiliate. Um, because 50 followers and three concurrence and 500 minutes streamed isn't a lot. Um, you know, I could have two super long streams, as long as I got at least 50 followers and I can get three friends to come watch my channel, if they open a tab and leave, that means I've, I've made affiliate status. And again, social responsibility. You know, even as an affiliate, because you know, you see all these people that have Twitch affiliate in their, their Twitter profile, it's, it's a mark of honor for a lot of people. What, what does that mean? At the end of the day, what does that mean? Um, your Twitch affiliate. What is the value added for me to put that in my Twitter profile or for me to go out? Because it feels like affiliate is way down here and partner's way the fuck up here, which you may not be able to see because my hand's oh, past the mic. Um, you know, and I, and I see people put Twitch partner in their profile. And, you know, because the requirements for partner, I can't, I can't begrudge someone putting partner in their profile. Um... But again, where's the social responsibility requirement? Um, where's the social, where's the, the even a, a decency pledge like uh, any key is running now. Andrea, if you're still here, can you please link to the any key pledge? Because I don't have it handy and I would have to open up a bunch of windows. Um, Hey, day drinking. There was the there was a place called Breakfast Bar in Long Beach. We we frequented it often. Um, but you know, again, where is that responsibility for for folks that are decent? Where are the people who are taking that status, be it affiliate or partner, seriously and and using it for the greater good? Not a lot that I've seen. Yeah, and I forgot to buy a day drinker shirt. I'm so annoyed with myself. I wish I I wish I could order one. Um, you know, because again, I think I'm lucky and a lot of us that know partner streamers and follow partner streamers that are doing good, you know, the people who stream for GamerX, for the GamerX Foundation rather, um, you know, Adam is very responsible with just his position in general because he knows of a size of audience. Um, not sure what M Mono is trying to post, but you may not just post links. Um, if you have a link, please send it to someone with a, a sword. Uh, you can't nick because you are not a mod, but I will permit you. Hang on. Yes, the any key pledge. Yeah, that's why I said Andrea, um, if she was still here, but I will permit... Enoch to do so um, because people, because people, um, there you go, Nick, you are permitted to post a link, go for it. 
um, um, even something like that where it was like, you know, kind of a, a as someone with this tier of responsibility on Twitch as a partner, as an affiliate, oh, hell, even a broadcaster that has no aspiration to either, to be a decent human being. To, to not act like Twitch is your personal dumping ground. To come into people's channel and, and throw slurs around. To to tell people to get over it. To start arguments. You know, and to go, oh my god, my free speech. I can't say what I want as a conservative. Sorry. Not sorry, because that annoyed me during the panel. Um, because again, as long as you don't violate the TOS... Um, Say what you're gonna say, because we know how people act. I mean, look at the way people act when they do like PUBG and they do multiplayer and and a lot of the stuff that folks don't um, folks don't you know think about except oh it's trash talk, it's trash talk, it's fine. Eh, not always fine, not always a good thing. <laughs> look, socks. I, apparently the audible sigh was, was enough. The audible sigh was enough. Um, no, I don't want to try the Twitch beta experience. Um, I'm sorry, Twitch beta keeps going, hey, Twitch beta, Twitch beta. I'm like, no, go away. Um, hey, Diana, um, <laughs> yeah, so I learned, um, I'm sorry, Ruth, um, every time it, it forces me to, to switch when I open a new window, I'm like, no. I don't like you. Go back. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Diana. Can I get some love in the chat for Diana? Because she totally saved my bacon. Uh, her and Jay Dorrance, if he's still around, unless he's like lurking from work. Because um, when I tried to go to LA after the con, uh, Lyft was going to be $100 for whatever reason. Because <laughs> it was like, oh, it's super busy. It's going to be $100. I was like, US dollars? Um, like, like actual currency. So is that the give please or take please? Give please. Right. I went, you, I like looked at the phone and it was like US dollars. Like not Canadian. Cause hell, you, I, a hundred Canadian would have been better than that shit. Um, so Jay and, and Diana saved my bacon by letting me crash in their room. Cause I was like, well, shit. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous, and it was the same when we got up the next day, and we're gonna try to get to LAX. Give please. I so funny story. I didn't know there was a give and a take please, um, because I got a give and a take please, and I thought I just had duplicates, but apparently I had the set because you could buy pins. Um, Diana has far better luck than I do, um, because I gave Diana money to go when she went to the store on Sunday. And she managed to get a TwitchCon 2017 and the Purple Flame, which I'd got a give please, a take please, and two table flips. And I was like, okay, what do I do with them? Um, <laughs> like the smoker from L4D2. Um, but yeah, so, so TwitchCon was a thing. Yeah, three Purple Flames. I, well... I, yeah, I think I got, you got me one, and then you, of the money I gave you, I had one. Yes, they are pins. Um, hold that thought. I will, I will grab my lanyard. Aw, you should have told me. Hold on, I'm going to get my lanyard. Ugh. Oh my god, my bag is so heavy. Actually, it's on my bag. Holy shit, this thing's heavy. I need to take my laptop out. Ooh, sorry for the Velcro noise. 
Um, and I need to... Oh shit, I may not be able to do a, a game stream. <gasps> Yay, bits! Thank you. Um, so I just realized, I don't know if my, if my headphones have any charge. Because I'm smart. Bits hype! Um, my lanyard is somewhere in here. I think. I hope. Aha! There it is. Yes, Cat. I know you're un unhappy with me. So, this was the other thing about, um, about it. So, I don't know which one you can see. Um... So here's the partner badge, which, which I don't know if you can see it. I'm looking at myself. I think I have to hold it up. Um, so partner, spot on me. Yes, my cat is hanging out. And so this was the exhibitor badge, which had exhibitor and whoever you were with. And then this is obviously isn't a badge, but if you took the any key pledge, you got this which is Twitch Unity. I'll probably use it as a bag tag at some point. And then on the back, it had um, the kind of diversity panels. It did not have the politics panel, which I found interesting. Um, probably can't read it because it's backwards. Uh, but when you, as a speaker, it, you did, they didn't have speaker badges. I don't know if they had speaker badges last year. Um, but, oh, that's right. So... I said, Diana had all the luck for pins. I did not. Um, I don't, or if they did, I wish they'd done it this year. So there was, wow, I, I have no luck. So these are the pins I got. I don't know if you can actually see them. Hopefully I'm holding them too high. Um, so the exception of the Reaper one, and the Wookiee Cookie from, from, uh, I don't know, man, but, well, I got two, because they're going to go on opposite parts of my jacket. Um, let's see if I have any power in my headphones. Hopefully I do. Otherwise, it's going to be a real short stream. Um. But yeah, that was another thing is that if you were on a panel, and I, I know I said this earlier, but I'm, I'm just kind of repeating it since I went and pulled my badge out. Um, there was no way to identify who was speaking, who was on a panel. Um, what PAX does is just SPG. Um, I don't know if I still have any dupes now because I gave Diana the table flip. I'll have to go through and see what I have. I have a bunch of the tick pins that they were trying to like basically give away and some dog tags from Razor. I have to go through my luggage. I'm I'm still unpa not packed, unpacked. Because I was home. I didn't get home till midnight. I was really annoyed. So, I've talked a lot, like an hour and 15 about TwitchCon and various things. Questions or comments in the chat? Hey, welcome back, Kalita. And while you all ask questions, I'm going to try to figure out what the fuck I'm going to play um, in terms of, of a game. Oh, thanks, Socks. I, uh, I try. I'm kind of an asshole when I moderate. But sometimes you got to do that. Um, so I was thinking more Mass Effect. Since I kind of have to play Mass Effect Andromeda for a thing. Or, um, I, because I want something where I don't have to think too hard. Um, I'm going to try to turn on the PS4 and see what's there. 
But if I turn it on, it's going to start coming through the, the stream. Because I have the Elgato turn, I have the Elgato hooked up. Hey, Dre. Uh, my cat says hi to you. I don't know if y'all can hear him. But he wandered by me out right when I said hi to Dre. And he meowed again. Um, so I have a bunch of little random games on the PS4. <laughs> you all in the cat. I can't, I don't know if I can get him to come over here. He's literally just wandering around yelling at me. Nick. That was a terrible pun and you should feel bad. So. <laughs> Hi, Tanya's meow meow. Hey, cat. Oh, he's finally eating. Uh, yeah, Kalita, I shared it on Tumblr and I thought on Facebook. What do you mean? Um, do you mean like the talk I gave to Faye or just panels at TwitchCon? This is where you can see the VOD right now. I don't know if they're broken up into individual panels yet. Um, but... Yeah, so there you go. Start at 4 hours, 51, 10. Um, I don't think they're broken up into individuals yet because the con just ended on Sunday. Um, but that is the VOD for all of Give Please on uh, Sunday. Yeah, and well, and and the weird thing was a lot of the staff was leaving on Sunday night. I don't know who you are, but stop calling me. I'm good. I'm happy, Dre. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. It was, it was good, although the VOD kind of uh, reinforced why we need to have these discussions. Yes, he, he is wandering around. You may see him walk by. I don't know. Actually, he's sitting right next to me. If I pick him up, I don't want to get cat hair all over me. Uh, for mine or for the for my panel or for the talk? How do you use the raid product, Ruth? I because I missed the keynote. Uh. Hey, Sheba, how are you? I mean, I... I couldn't have watched the chat anyway while I was moderating the panel. Brian tried. He was just like, nope, I just couldn't do it. Um, yeah, talking about TwitchCon. Oh, what was the big fear, Ruth? Um, raids, pro like how do you use the new raid product? That's my question. Let's find out together. Um, okay, TLDR, stream summary. Huh, premiere. Raids. Oh, it's not out yet. Oh, it will start in November, actually. It's not out yet. Mm. 
And of course, I can't see anything until I put my glasses back on. Mmm. So I wonder. Oh, nothing happened. I mean, that's a legit fear. I think it's really a legit fear, and um, I'm sure people are going to misuse it, just like anything else, like how they misuse emotes to harass. Um, is, and I guess one thing I don't understand from a safety perspective, or even how to do it, is when people restream. I'm oh, like for the host crusher. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that, Ruth. Um, okay. I have talked for about an hour and a half. Let's... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so game-wise, I'm gonna just... I can still see you or hear you all or something. Um, but let me look at my desktop and see what games I feel like playing, or if I want to boot up the PS4. Um, so we could do Witcher 3 on PC. I figured out that I'd had it set to 60 FPS. That was not helping me. Um. Uh. Um, I could try PUBG, but do we want salt? Do we want that salt? I could play some Skyrim, some soothing Skyrim. Um, no XCOM 2. I would like to not be that angry. Um, could do some Dragon Age 2. I know Ruth would go for that. Um, could also play some Guild Wars 2. I downloaded Assassin's Creed Rogue because it was like really cheap. I have Pillows of Eternity. I have Banner Saga. I'm trying to avoid things that will make me annoyed. Gwent I was fine with until um, I discovered the big disparity between you. <laughs> Do you want salt? So we could do Skyrim. Um, let me just start up Skyrim. Hang on. Which means it's going to be so special edition. So when you start hearing the music, this will be why. Um, that means I also need to get my headset. So hang on. Oh, that explains why the, the massager's not working. Ha ha. <laughs> Watches for Kitty in the background. You know, if you gave him... Let's see, how, uh, let's see how much power I have. That is the one thing I don't like about these.